Today, we'll be discussing how living, working, and urban environmental conditions have led to inequalities in contagion and mortality during the COVID-19 pandemic. Environmental injustice occurs when poor and minority residents tend to suffer to a greater extent from environmental toxic, unsafe working conditions and resource extraction. Environmental injustice has many implications for health and COVID-19 is no exception. Patterns of health are associated with individual and environmental characteristics and exposures. In urban areas particularly, low-income and minority residents and other marginalized communities are exposed to more environmental hazards such as industrial pollution, air pollution from multiple sources, and flooding made worse by climate change than others. For example, in the case of West Dallas, the neighborhoods of, predominant, neighborhoods of predominantly Black and Latino residents were unjustly exposed to hazards from living next to a lead smelting plant in a low-lying location that is also at risk for flooding and has high levels of air pollution, often blowing in across the river from downtown Dallas. Generations of residents remain in this tight-knit community, despite its many environmental challenges as housing costs elsewhere are prohibitive to low-income people and that it is their home. More recently, after the construction of a new bridge and a rapid influx of private investment, the neighborhood is also facing the pressures of gentrification and related displacement. In cities around the world, unjust and unhealthy environmental, social, living, and occupational conditions place some residents at greater risk for poor health than others. These conditions are not randomly distributed and often overlap, accumulating risk among the most vulnerable populations. Like in Dallas, many cities are very socially inequitable, and this manifests itself in the spatial distribution of health outcomes, where marginalized groups face worse health and lower life expectancies. This map of Barcelona shows, low, uh, shows life expectancy by neighborhood, demonstrating an almost 10-year difference between the neighborhood with the highest life expectancy and the neighborhood with the lowest. This pattern of poor health demonstrated in the last slide by differences in life expectancy can also be seen by examining rates of COVID-19 cases and death. Many of the same neighborhoods with lower life expectancies also had more cases of COVID-19 as of May 11th, 2020. This cannot be explained by a difference in the distribution of people by age as the statistics shown on this map have been standardized by age. Generally, we see similar spatial patterns in the distribution of resources, such as income and particularly level of deprivation. On the, on the left, the map shows income per person, and on the right, we see the percent of income spent on housing. Some of the neighborhoods with the highest percent of income spent on housing also have the most cases of COVID-19. Housing conditions themselves put people at greater risk for poor health. Living in smaller homes and homes that are crowded places people at greater risk for infection by being in close proximity to others. In addition, during quarantine, it is more difficult to maintain your health if you live in crowded conditions or a small home. This is on top of having perhaps more stress due to loss of income and care responsibilities for older people, children, or disabled relatives. The map on the left shows the median size of homes and Barcelona, where the darker colors are smaller. On the right, the map shows the average number of square meters per person living in the home. Here, the darker colors show higher density or less space per person. And again, we see a similar pattern to the map showing the ca cases of COVID-19. Already in wealthy countries where data is available by race or ethnicity, we also see an undue burden of COVID-19 among non-white minority populations. For instance, in the UK, we see that Black Caribbeans are almost three times as likely to die of COVID-19 as the white British population, and this far exceeds the expected additional burden among this population. Other populations at high risk include refugees, imprisoned populations, homeless populations, and residents of nursing homes and other institutions. These out outbreaks also mean that workers in these institutions serving these same populations are also at greater risk. In March, the Spanish Army began a process of disinfecting nursing homes across the country. They discovered many residents who had passed away, presumably due to COVID-19, their bodies left abandoned by overwhelmed staff. As of May 10th in Spain, almost 18,000 residents of nursing homes had died, and this is likely a low estimate. Around the world, outbreaks of COVID-19 have been particularly intense among institutionalized populations, such as residents of nursing homes, many of whom are elderly and or suffer from other comorbid conditions, placing them at greater risk for infection and death. 
Other outbreaks have been reported in refugee camps and prisons, other institutionalized populations with poor living conditions, living in close proximity and with no control over their environments. In addition to individual exposures, such as living in small homes with worse, of worse quality, having lower incomes and level of education, and general less access to resources, poor environmental conditions can place these communities at greater risk for contagion and death. The same exposures that put residents at risk for poor health in general, manifesting as chronic conditions such as obesity, cancer, hypertension, and respiratory conditions such as asthma, also have implications for risk of COVID-19. Therefore, if you have a chronic health condition, such as a respiratory disease, heart disease, or obesity, you are also at greater risk for contracting of and dying from COVID-19. If you are poor or a minority, you are more likely to suffer from any of these chronic conditions and more likely to live in unhealthy conditions and near environmental hazards, placing you at greater complex and multiplicative risk for poor health. For instance, many of these overlapping risks are embodied in the outbreak of COVID-19 in Detroit, Michigan. Detroit was once a thriving city of 1.8 million, with the home of many auto companies and related industries. As the auto industry declined, the city lost jobs, resulting in widespread poverty and many abandoned and dilapidated buildings. The city was further hit hard by the 2008 financial crisis. The population is now just 700,000, less than half of what it was, and is one of the poorest cities in the United States. Many residents lack access to health care, transportation, and even clean water, and the rates of obesity, diabetes, and hypertension are higher than in the state or as in the country as a whole. These conditions have led the city to be a hotspot for COVID-19. As of May 11, there were almost 10,000 reported cases in the city of Detroit and approximately 1,200 deaths. A preliminary study in March, published in March by German, uh, by researcher in Germany showed that out of the 4,443 deaths from COVID-19 that had occurred as of this time, 78% were in five regions in northern Italy and central Spain. These same five regions had the highest concentration of air pollution. These results indicate that the long-term exposure to air pollution may be one of the most important contributors to mortality from COVID-19 in these regions. One reason that air pollution may be a risk factor for death due to COVID-19 is that air pollution is a risk factor for many of the same chronic conditions that make people more susceptible to the virus. For example, they found that 79% of COVID-19 patients also had hypertension, which is also linked to air pollution. This was also the case for diabetes, heart disease, and kidney failure. Furthermore, nit nitrogen dioxide exposure, the type of air pollution they measured, is linked to the respiratory diseases like asthma and chronic bronchitis. Although this was a regional level analysis done early in the progression of the pandemic, in most cities, lower SCD, lower socioeconomic status and minority residents are more likely to be exposed to environmental hazards and other types of pollution, such as air pollution, although this is not the case in Barcelona. Lower income and minority residents are also likely to hold low paying jobs that are deemed essential, meaning that they both earn less than others in white collar jobs and are put at greater risk by continuing to work during the COVID-19 pandemic and often in unsafe conditions, particularly during an infectious disease outbreak. These conditions include working in lower level healthcare posi positions with patient contact or cleaning healthcare facilities with known outbreaks, often with less training than doctors and, or nurses, less pay and less likelihood of having the appropriate personal protective equipment. Such workers are often under-recognized, underpaid, and underprotected. Working in essential businesses that require interaction with the general public, but that pay poorly and often have long hours, such as grocery store clerks, transit workers, police officers, delivery people, and cleaning staff, is another risk for COVID-19. Many of these jobs have other overlapping occupational health risks <clears throat> because in many cities, minority and lower income communities, often those working in jobs with greater risk, tend to live in less centrally located neighborhoods. Transportation to and from often using public transportation increases potential for contagion. Thus, orders to shelter in place to prevent contracting the virus work for many privileged communities. Thus, orders to shelter in place to prevent contracting the virus work for many privileged communities. But such an order presents a challenge for essential workers and those with no home or inadequate housing or who face any number of poor social or environmental conditions. For these communities, this challenge is not always considered. The ability to shelter in a safe and healthy place is not shared by all. This does not just put poor and minority groups at greater risk for COVID-19 and contagion and mortality. 
It also has long-term implications for lasting inequity already embedded in society. It is not a one-way relationship in which poor and minority communities are at greater risk for illness and death because social injustices already existed, placing these communities at greater risk for illness in the ways I just described and at greater risk for economic disadvantage to have less of a social safety net during times of economic and social stress. These same communities are likely to face an unjust burden in overcoming the pandemic and its economic consequences. As non-essential workers are losing their jobs or facing less pay, these hardships affect lower income communities more and make it more difficult to overcome the pandemic in the long term. Neither the global impact of the, of the COVID-19 pandemic nor the full scope of associated injustices have been fully realized. Thank you.